People who had to evacuate homes close to the Fukushima Daiichi plant may be allowed to go back for a short while. The government set up a 20-kilometer no-entry zone around the plant after the nuclear crisis began. It allowed people whose homes are between 3 and 20 kilometers from the plant to go back briefly, but it hasn't allowed trips back to homes within 3 kilometers of the plant. The government says it's now arranging brief trips to homes within the three-kilometer radius because the reactors are being cooled stably and radiation from the plant is going down. It will soon begin detailed radiation monitoring to ensure that returning evacuees are safe. I think the Japanese government have been criminally irresponsible in irradiating these children at those levels. I, ca I cannot imagine how you can possibly have a law and then decide to change it on the basis of some, some snap decision that, that, that is pragmatic. And, and that decision will, will result almost certainly in, in the deaths of a lot of children. This, this, this beggars belief how they, can, how they can behave in this way in a civilized country it would not be allowed to happen in Europe. But I should add that in calculating the dose to these children, the government appears to have not calculated the internal dose at all, because as far as these filters are concerned, even people 100 kilometers away from this plant will have already received more than 20 millisieverts. 66 years ago today, the United States dropped an atomic bomb on Hiroshima. On this anniversary, the city is filled with prayers for peace. In light of Japan's current nuclear crisis, the city mayor urged the government to review its energy policy at the annual memorial ceremony. NHK World's Keikichi Hanada reports from the Peace Memorial Park in Hiroshima. About 50,000 people came here this morning to remember the moment in 1945 when an atomic bomb destroyed the city and killed tens of thousands of people. The names of 275,000 A-bomb victims were placed in a cenotaph. The list of the so-called Hibakusha has grown by 5,800 since last year's ceremony. More people have died of the A-bomb's effects and because previous deaths have been confirmed as radiation-related. <laughs> There was a moment of silence at 8.15 a.m., the exact time the bomb exploded. The mayor of Hiroshima, Kazumi Matsui, delivered the annual peace declaration. He called for a lasting peace in a world free of nuclear weapons. The time has come for the rest of us to learn from all the Hibakusha, what they experienced and their desire for peace. Then we must communicate what we learn to future generations and to the rest of the world. This year, Japan has had a fresh reminder of the dangers of atomic energy. The earthquake and tsunami on March 11th sparked an unprecedented nuclear crisis and people in Japan are again living in fear of radiation. It's a situation the mayor of Hiroshima never wants to be repeated. From the common admonition that nuclear energy and humankind cannot exist together, some seek to abandon nuclear power altogether. Others advocate extremely strict control of nuclear power and increased utilization of renewable energy. The Japanese government should humbly accept this reality, quickly review our energy policies, and institute concrete countermeasures to regain the understanding and trust of the people. Prime Minister Naoto Kan says Japan's energy policy is being reviewed. He says Japan should gradually reduce its dependence on nuclear power. Regarding nuclear energy, we will deeply reflect over the conventional belief that nuclear energy is safe. Thoroughly look into the cause of the accident and to secure safety, 
implement fundamental measures while also decreasing the degree of dependence on nuclear power generation to aim for a society that does not rely on nuclear power. 66 years after the atomic bombing, Hiroshima is continuing to remind the world about what happened here. Its role as a focal point for nuclear disarmament and world peace may be more important than ever. Keikichi Hanada, NHK World, Hiroshima. The Japanese government says Japan will continue exporting nuclear power technology for the time being. That's despite the Prime Minister's call for a review of nuclear policy in light of the crisis in Fukushima. The cabinet approved the strategy of continuing with ongoing negotiations for nuclear technology exports and honoring existing deals. They said Japan should provide its nuclear technology to countries that want to use it while ensuring the highest standards of safety. Chief Cabinet Secretary Yukio Edano said the government's decision is not inconsistent with the Prime Minister's earlier remarks. We need to compile policies on nuclear technology cooperation as soon as possible, taking our findings about Fukushima into account. Until the nuclear crisis in Fukushima, the government had been promoting nuclear plant exports as part of the nation's growth strategy.